Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. This video is brought to you by You Can Rise Above Anything Ryan Murrow's T-Shirt. You can get yours by simply visiting my Teespring store to get a T-Shirt like this one, plus other designs, um, mugs, indoor pillows, etc. So yes, please go ahead and check that out. Get your T-Shirt today. Your support will ensure that I continue making content like this till the end of time. Alright, now on to the what if. Gohan, I'll make a man out of you. Hey guys, and welcome to What If Chi Chi Let Gohan Train Part 2. And a big thank you for those who actually voted in the polls. And I will let you know the results of that poll later on in this video. But, kicking straight off from where part one left off, the Z Warriors are all training to meet the Saiyans Nappa and Vegeta in an epic battle to decide the fate of the Earth. Now, as we know from the last part, Raditz did indeed come to Earth looking for his brother, Kakarot, or Goku. However, he was met with some unexpected resistance to say the least. Because not only in this what if story did he have Goku battling him, but Gohan and Chi Chi as well. And thanks to a little sneak attack from, from Piccolo, Raditz was defeated and Goku survived. Biggest difference, Goku survived. And this is all due to the big significant difference that Chi Chi allowed Gohan to train with, with his father as well as study. Which also gave Chi Chi a bit more incentive to join in on some of the training too. Which means Goku didn't get soft in the five years. He got stronger. And because of that, Gohan is stronger during the point where Raditz shows up. And now, the Saiyans are just about to make their way and make their final approach to Earth. Goku has since completed his training with King Kai, because being the guardian of Earth, Kami can't, does have the authority to send someone to Outworld. But of course, he's got to run through King Yama, which King Yama allowed. So Goku still gets his big training and power boost from King Kai, learning the Kai Ken and the Spirit Bomb. Now, in case I didn't make it clear in the previous part, Gohan did in indeed train with Piccolo, like in the original timeline. Only difference is there was no six month survival training for Gohan because Gohan was doing some training with his father. He already knows all about Ki and how to use it. So they were able to pretty much go full ball for the entire year preparing for the Saiyans. With a slight difference with Chi Chi in there making sure Gohan gets some studying in. Which you can imagine led to some hilarious dialogue. Now you listen to me Piccolo. I will allow my son to train, but he's gonna study too. But, but we're talking about the f fate of the earth, Kent. Surely that can wait. But nothing, Gohan, will not fall behind. And you think um this would have lowered their power, but no, it was actually quite an even balance. And both Piccolo and Gohan are both stronger. In this timeline than their than their original counterparts and Chi Chi joint was able to join training join in the training too and learn how to shoot key blasts and learn how to fly and she intends to help Gohan and Piccolo face off these Saiyans and of course Goku when he eventually gets back all right so now I'm about to answer now to answer the poll now in the poll I asked who, what should the Dragon Balls be used for now that Goku survived? 
Should they be used to instantly transport Goku to the battlefield to meet the Saiyans, or to unlock the Z Warrior's latent potential? Now, pretty much everyone, well, it was 100% on the poll, voted for um, the latent potential to be unlocked. Which, um, I'm kind of glad you um, picked that, because if Goku was instantly at the battlefield, you know, we can't make this too easy. And so, because of that, Goku still has to run his big mile onto the snake way! Just like in the original timeline, but all the Z-Warriors have their latent potentials unlocked. And what does that mean for the battle? Well, we're about to find out because Nappa and Vegeta have just crash-landed on Earth. And Nappa gives his um, traditional greeting and blows up the city. I oh, know, not, not really a good first impression for the Saiyans. You know, they just come to some stra strange new world uh, instead of um, saying, Hi, how you going? Nappa just blows up the city. And honestly. And of course, they're looking around. Now remember, this time... Nappa and Vegeta do not know about the Dragon Balls. The Dragon Balls were not mentioned during the battle with Raditz. They weren't mentioned because Goku didn't die. So Piccolo didn't be act or smoke and go on a Haha, we got Dragon Balls. Goku will be here tomorrow. Well, you're dead. Ha 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 ha. That conversation didn't happen, so Nappa and Vegeta have no idea at this point that there are Dragon Balls on Earth. So they're not here looking for them. They're just here to, um... Basically, fight the people who defeated Raditz, maybe conquer the Earth, sell it for a profit, and, um, you know, maybe make Lord Freezer happy in the, in the process. So they're seeking out the strongest power level on the planet, and they find that there are quite a few power levels that are significantly high, higher than the power level of 1000. But that's, uh, of course, for Jesus, like, oh, well, that's not much of a threat to us. Let's just find the strongest one. <laughs> so, needless to say, they're off, flying away to the strongest power levels, which is Piccolo and Gohan. And of course, there's Chi Chi as well. But she is signif still significantly weaker than pretty much the rest of the Z Warriors. So, as they assemble, and of course, there was all. <clears throat> You know, and they have their little reunion with Krillin, and the Saiyans show up, and Vegeta's like, oh, we still have six of those Cybermen, don't we? Ah, yes, Vegeta, we definitely have six Cybermen. I'm gonna go plant them. And, you know, we have that brief scuffle between the Cybermen and our heroes. Difference is, we got Chi-Chi as well, so it's, um... Chi-Chi gets to fight one, while the other five are basically divided between... Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin. Now the biggest difference in this battle is that Gohan's a lot more active in this fight. He's not scared. This isn't his first fight. Like in the... Like his original counterpart. He's actually getting into the action. But of course, before any of that could all finish up or any Cybermans are taken out, <laughs> the rest of the Z-Warriors show yeah. up and we get our little one-on-one -on -one match. Which of course, first fight between TN and his Cyberman goes... Exactly the same way, and Vegeta bought up that Cyberman. I specifically said, do not hold anything back. But how could you say that, Vegeta? His power level was... It was what? Like Raditz. That's right. Raditz is so weak, we can literally grow Raditzes. <laughs> uh, I like my tributes to Dragon Ball Z. Bridge. It, was, it, was, it really was a good... A good parody series. Anyway, so naturally Yamcha fights his Cyberman and unfortunately the same thing happens. Even with his latent potential unlocked, Yamcha is still not able to survive the Kamikaze Blast from the Cyberman. Because remember the way the Cyberman grabs on the Yamcha, there's no way to defend. Your guards are down, you're completely vulnerable as we see as we see with Goku being taken out by a ray gun in Dragon Ball Super. 
by Sorbet, Freezer's Minion. Anyway, now I'm getting a little sidetracked, sorry. Alright, so with that done and Krillin gets all angry, you killed my friend, I will take on all six of them, and does his big scatter shot and he just takes them all out, except for the last one who charges Gohan, but Piccolo doesn't save him this time like in the original. Gohan just paddles up a key boss and wipes out the final Cyberman. So remember, this Gohan is a lot braver. And let me assure you, Gohan's not taking any prisoners. No way. And it's just a badass move, just go home and blow up, destroying the last Cyberman. It's pretty cool. In fact, I will draw an image of that. Alright, so now the Cybermen are now defeated. Now Nappa's getting ready. Nappa's joining the battle. Alright, time for some meat in the grinder. And of course, he ends up battling TN. And the battle with Nappa and TN pretty much goes ideally the same, but difference is TN with his latent potential unlocked. He doesn't lose his arm in the fight. He's able to go toe-to-toe to -toe with Nappa in that initial scuffle. Nappa is still a lot stronger, but Tien's not losing his arm this time. And that pretty much goes the same way right up until Chiaotzu eventually sacrifices himself to try to take out Nappa. The, the blast being a bit more potent and does a li little bit more damage to Nappa. Still nowhere near enough, but a bit. He's a little... He's breathing a little heavy. And, of course, then he's moving in to try to try finish off Tien. And that is when he's cheap-shotted by Piccolo, Krillin, and also Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi gets a shot in on Nappa. And they're doing their whole big team. Meanwhile, of course, the whole, Go on, quick! Hit him with all your strength! This is our chance! But unlike in the original timeline, where Gohan runs behind a rock, he full on powers up a Masenko and fires it at Nappa. But unfortunately, Nappa still capitalizes on time and he just knocks the Masenko blast out of the way. But his, guard, his guard's down, he's completely forgot about TN. He doesn't see the tri beam blast coming at him until last second when Vegeta's like, WATCH OUT NAPPA! And Nappa spots it, he gets hit, the blast goes off like he does in the anime. Does Nappa does Nappa Nappa die? No, no, of course not. But Tien also survives. He's just very badly winded. So because remember, Tien has a lot more energy left over due to the fact he was able to go toe to toe Nappa at the beginning with Nappa at the beginning and not lose his arm in the process. Tien's not quite as weakened as he was in the weakened condition he was in the original timeline. So therefore, without having to use up all his life energy to put into the tri-beam, he just had to use the, um, the rest of his power along with his latent potential, and that was enough to give him the power he needed to blast Nappa. Unfortunately, it still wasn't enough to do Nappa in but it has damaged his armor significantly, and he's already taking it off. <laughs> Honestly, Nappa, can you put a shirt on? Honestly. <laughs> so anyway, so at that point, they're all going, all the heroes are like, oh, what are we up against here? These guys, they, they can't be mortal. This is Piccolo talking, I'm doing Piccolo's voice here. Come on, Goku, get here, we need you. And of course, this sparks Vegeta's curiosity about this. Hmm, what is this Goku thing he talking about? And of course, he catches on that this Goku is in fact Kakarot. Haha, <laughs> you actually think Kakarot can save you? He couldn't even best Raditz on his own. You know, if he's so brave, where is he? Where is Kakarot? And of course, he gives the Z-Warriors their reprieve, like he does in the original. 
their um, free hours for Goku or Kakarot to get here. And of course, I, Nappa, are gonna have my best day ever. We. And of course, they get back and the battle resumes and Nappa has set his sights on Gohan. Who is having a bit of a fight with um, Nappa and Gohan's power is actually quite close to Nappa. Piccolo and Gohan's power levels are quite close to Nappa due to that extra training. Because remember, like I said, they had the full year to train. They didn't have to wait for Gohan to unlock his key or get any battle experience beforehand. They were able to go pretty much full ball whenever they trained. And they got significantly stronger because of it. And Nappa's still being the stronger one. He does take control of the battle. And it looks... Things start to look a bit hairy for Gohan. And that is when Chi Chi steps up and just delivers a really powerful power kick right in a Nappa's kisser and sends him off into a mountain. I know. Who'd have thought Chi Chi had that in her? But, you know what they say when you mess with a mother and her cub. Leave my son alone! Of course, this is what met with our nap, with typical Nappa, uh, Nappa retribution, when he basically just boosh, knocks Chi Chi out of the way. She's pretty much down and out, and this is when Piccolo teleports behind Nappa and grabs his tail like in the anime and he gets nailed in the head just like in the anime. Yeah, probably not the best idea, Piccolo. Huh, you really thought that would work? Nappa and I have developed beyond that pitiful weakness. And that, of course, means Piccolo's down and out. And, well, it is basically left Gohan, one on one with Nappa, where Krillin and Tien aren't able to do much because they're just out of it, out of it from the aftermath of fighting Nappa. Which um, you no, know, I guess no matter how you slice it, Nappa is still the patty cake king, and Nappa is still significantly stronger than Gohan, but it's still a pretty good bit of a brawl and fight between them. And it was a distraction enough for Piccolo to get to get back up and he blasts Nappa in the back just like he does in the anime. And um Vegeta's just sort of left there stunned. How can these guys be so much more powerful than what they were a year ago? And then Vegeta picks up picks up, of course, that Piccolo's in a mech here. Huh, maybe these these wish orbs on Namek are actually real. Hmm. Which means if we go to Namek after this, we can use these wish balls, wishing orbs, make us immortal, and then overthrow Lord Frieza. It's all becoming clear. So which arm their intent was to kill Piccolo anyway, because beforehand they didn't know about the Dragon Balls anyway. And of course, Gohan let slip that if we lose Piccolo, then we lose Kami and the Dragon Balls. And well, well, we're coming to the part where um Nappa gets a shh, gets a nail by Gohan, and you are making me so bad. And he charges up his big energy. He's about to obliterate Gohan. Where's Gohan's mother? She's still down and out from when Nappa whacked her before. She's alive, but she's just down and out of it. So, at this point, the only one who can save Gohan is Piccolo doing that noble deed he does in the original timeline. Throws himself in front of Gohan and sacrifices himself, taking the full brute force of Nappa's blast. And, unfortunately, just like in the... just like in the anime, Piccolo doesn't make it. Piccolo died, saving the first... Saving his first true and real friend in Gohan because their relationship still built just like it does in the original timeline. Piccolo grew to care about Gohan, and this was his 
final act of redemption. Unfortunately, he didn't live to see through it. But this is where the best part of this part of this what if happens. Gohan gets furious, his rage builds up, and he powers up his Masenko. He's powering up his Masenko to the point that Vegeta's scouter actually explodes. It explodes. And he fire and Gohan fires the Masenko. Vegeta's warning Nappa to get out the way, but it's too late. Nappa is completely engulfed by Gohan's Masenko that completely obliterates Nappa. Nappa is dead. Gohan killed Nappa, and Vegeta is just speechless. Ugh. Impossible! How could this be happening? Is this what the mighty Saiyan race has been reduced to? Beaten by a kindergartner? And of course, Vegeta has completely forgotten that Kakarot is on the way. He did read his power reading before when he's instructing Nappa to take them all out. When he was instructing Nappa to take them all out. Can't risk them all ganging up on him. And when Vegeta's finally come to the decision, okay, I've got to take all these Z what these so called defenders of the earth out immediately, it's too late. Goku has now arrived. When Vegeta was coming in to attack, tackle the Z-Warriors and take him out just now, Goku arrived in Kaioken form and whacked Vegeta. Goku has now arrived. Vegeta is feeling outmatched. He's got this kid who was able to best Nappa. Tien and Krillin are still very much alive. We've got Chi-Chi. And now... Kakarot has arrived. This is not looking too good for Vegeta. He's just standing there, reeling, bleeding from the lip. Yeah, this does not look good for Vegeta at all. And I think that is where we're going to leave things for this what if. You know what, do you fancy another poll here? Do the entire... To, do the remaining Z Warriors, Chi Chi, Tien, Krillin and Gohan, all team up with Goku and take on Vegeta together? Or does Vegeta, uh, not Vegeta, does Goku still insist on facing Vegeta alone? Because this is going to be a good fight. And I'm in need of a fight. I'm in need of a fight. I'm in need of a fight. I'll leave that decision to you in the poll. Let me know in the let me know in the polls or even in the comments if you want to. Well that is it for this part of this what if. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you stick around for um part three. And rest assure you, there will be a part three. Alright. Catch you later!